morning, dear saints, brethren, sisters, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, and please read along with me in the scriptures we are going to be looking at and considering today. We're going to have some expository today, okay? So, yeah, with your copy of scriptures, if you got a ribbon marker today, you might want to use it, okay? <laughs> this is the only time I'm going to make a mention of this in this video. we got a lot of stuff to get to. I, I was sent a link here, um, and, uh, hey, 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 you sweetheart, you know, that little jerk looking to... Uh, get some views off of your uh, little skirt tails there, you know. <laughs> that was funny. I'll give you that. That was funny. I know the the mop on here needs something to be desired. But you know what there, sugar pie sweetheart? At least I can grow my hair. It's you, sweet pie. That's enough. That that that's that's enough. Okay, well, well, all right. Sorry, I I had to. I I, I was <laughs> sent that, and apparently too, I got a notification for it too. However, um, uh, you know, whatever. And I saw it, it's like, oh wow, <laughs> oh, looking to you know write the skirt tales, huh, there, little boy. <laughs> anyway, you know, brethren. As we're approaching the redemption of the purchase possession and the falling away, which is signified primarily, I mean, you want to define this falling away. Don't believe Mr. Fig. He's trying to cover his backside, okay? The falling away is not saved brethren that get messed up. That's not what the falling away is. The falling away are those who claim that they are saved after years and years and years, but as time progresses, they get made manifest that they ain't really saved. That's the falling away. Okay? Don't let anyone, please, please, don't, don't let anyone believe, let you, you know, deceive you that the falling away is saved people getting messed up. That happens all the time. Okay? But, brethren, have you already figured out there are certain people you and I as saints just ain't going to get along with? Now, usually what happens is it's because of the sagging sin suit. Okay? When it's in context to actual saints. We've addressed this before, but we're, you know, in, in light of recent events... <laughs> Like I told you, wonderful, brother. Wonderful. In light of recent events, there are just certain people, saints even, who we can't get along. The perfect example of this is, of course, is Paul and Barnabas. They were getting along great, but until a doctrinal thing about bringing Mark with them uh, got into the way, and that was a doctrinal thing. Okay, we're not going to talk about that today. That's not the point. But the point of that is, here were two saved brethren, two saints. The Lord favored Paul, obviously, obviously, but nonetheless, Barnabas, a saved man who's in heaven, because of a disagreement which was brought about by flesh, they parted asunder, and they never worked with each other uh, ever again. Don't know, I mean, there's, you know, some things that give a hint that they might have seen each other after that. But that 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 is the place where you can go to in Scripture to be like, okay. Because, uh, you know, the lost world sees us saints who don't get along with each other. And it's like, aren't you guys supposed to always get along? Yes, we should. But unfortunately, our spirit and soul are housed within this sagging sin suit. And this generally is the cause when saints can't get along. It happens. It's unfortunate, but it happens. But see, the dynamic between that is 
if, uh, for example, there's an individual from Indiana who, um, or might be from Indiana, or Indianapolis, one of the two, I don't know, who, we don't like each other, but I think he's a saint. Uh, and I'm not talking about that little punk either. Don't get that, but don't, don't I, that, 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 never mind about that little devil. But if that devil, you, you know, not devil, excuse me, if the one guy I'm speaking about were out of the blue, he was like, Brad, I need to talk with you. I got, I got some stuff going on. Like, okay, let's talk. That's what we do for brethren, okay? We love the brethren. Don't necessarily get along all the time, okay? Oh, one, oh, one second. All right, we ain't having that. I uh, turned off the phone, my ringer on my phone. Anyway, as we, as I was saying, saints don't always get along. When we're up in heaven, things will be different, obviously. But you know, there are just certain brethren. There are people who I believe are brethren, and you know, we are brethren, and we just, we just can't get along, and that's unfortunate. However, the other part of this is. When you got these people who are claiming to be saved and are not false converts, stupid antinomianists, or whatever you want, um, that we can't get along with these people. We can't get along with these people. We can't. You know, there's no point in trying to converse with someone who is working for the Vatican, who is a devil. Especially when they know the truth and go out of their way to speak contrary to the truth. There, there's, there's no point. But see, what can happen is it can touch close to home within your little family structure unit. And there are, there are those of you brethren, I know, I know you know what I'm talking about mothers, your fathers, your brothers, your sisters, by blood, you know, not in Christ, okay? Psalm 133, the start. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. <clears throat> it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Micah 7. Micah 7. Verses 5, not Estras. Micah 7. Verses 5 on to 7. Thank you, pardon, brethren. <laughs> this set of scriptures is really getting worn in well. Micah 7, 5 on to 7. Trust ye not in a friend. I have friends who are brothers. They are a brother first, and they are a friend. Why? Because we have the same father. Okay? All right? Trust ye not in a friend, but ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. That's a reference unto the wife. Okay? Keep, it, keep that in your mind. Yeah. For the son dis dishonoreth the father. The daughter riseth up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. And in one of the Psalms, it's like, you know, if it had been an enemy, then I could have borne it. Then I would have hid myself, but it was thou. A man mine equal. We took sweet counsel together. And I've experienced that quite a bit, you know, um, with people where we've, you know, put our hand out, only to have it spit on or bitten by people. Um, I remember a couple of years ago we had we were having fellowship with the this uh, lost couple, who at the first were very sweet and endearing, and then 
overnight they did a twist and they they started attacking us and it was like wow wow okay but that I mean that kind of thing happens quite a bit quite a bit they weren't brethren or sister okay therefore I will look unto the Lord I will wait for the God of my salvation my God will hear me and of course Matthew 10 now check this out Matthew 10 we are warned that the people that we want you know like for example your 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 father your mother your brother your sister your husband your wife okay Matthew 10 verse 34 Matthew 10 verse 34 right. think not that I am come to send peace on earth I came not to send peace but a sword the authorized version and you know for those of you who have family members and you're you're talking you know this they're they're Christians and you're saints and they're talking about, you know, well, the Bibles and whatnot, and you adhere to the Scripture. <sighs> Let them alone. They are the blind leaders of the blind. But Luke 12, 51 out of 53. Matthew 10 again, verse 35, or verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Matthew 12, 51 on 53. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay. But rather division. Division. A God who chooses, hmm? who chooses, who chose the way of the cross, okay, the division of God, okay, Writing this down for links in the description box. For from henceforth there shall be five and one house divided. Three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son. And the son against the father. The mother against the daughter. And the daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Go back to Matthew 10 verse 36. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Second Corinthians chapter six. Now here, here's here's the meat. Here's what we're going to be getting into today. We're going to be going over some very familiar verses, but we're going to have a, a deeper look at them. There are just people, brethren, that we are not going to be able to get along with. Saints in no way, shape, or form are going to be able to get along with an antinomianist or a Catholic. Okay, we just can't get along with these people. Why? They serve Satan. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You know, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, like you and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. These devils, they serve one God made of three persons. Okay, we can't. That's two different gods. One who is the capital G, real God, and the one is the little G God who's earthly, sensual, devilish, okay? We're not going to get what we can Okay? Christianity in the name of peace would have you to compromise. The Lord's like, okay, peace? Sometimes the best way to have peace is to get away from certain people. Okay? Stay away from them. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14, we're going to read, of course, to verse 18. Second uh, Corinthians 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. The yoke, the thing with the, the ox and the bull, or the bull and the bull, right? Ox and ox, but see what I did? An ox and a bull. Hmm. 
unequally yoked. Uh, it has, you know, there are some out there It's like, well, this has nothing to do with marriage, they say, but it has to do with fellowship. Uh, what is a, what could be a more intimate thing of fellowship between a husband and a wife? Okay, there are those out there where, when it comes to this, it's like, this has nothing to do with marriage, it has to do with fellowship. It's like, but, well, dude, what, where, what's, what's the more intimate means of fellowship besides your personal relationship with the Lord? You know, you read uh, Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to be in that today. Uh, what's more intimate, what's more of a union of a yoking than marriage? Okay. What, that, 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 that don't make no sense, man. That don't make no sense. So, yes, this is a twofold thing. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Oh, these, these antinomianist people, they, they believe in something themselves. Oh, they believe in themselves, yeah. And they actually do believe in God, the little G God. Satan, you know, the one who in the book of Revelation will be manifest in three persons. <laughs> oh, the sin, and again, brother, you know, you got to remember, Christianity has been brought up in Trinitarianism. Oh, you got to remember that. Okay, keep that in mind. Especially when you're talking to King James Bible and Christians who, <laughs> you know, are Trinitarians that I, I know. How come they, they can't see what we see? I know. But you got to have grace for that again, brother. Remember that. you got to have grace. All right? Remember, people, Satan's church, Rome, from its inception, the... Look this up. Okay? Do a little something. Okay? Their initial doctrine that they pushed was one God in three persons. And over the literal centuries, it's kind of stuck, unfortunately. Okay? But be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, bearing the yoke, two in one yoke trying to plow a field together, and they're unequally yoked, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Why? Why? For what fellowship, and again, what is the height of fellowship other than your relationship with the Lord, I'm talking here physically on the earth, what is the height of any uh, fellowship, but besides that, between a husband and a wife, okay? You know, when someone comes to this, like, that's not talking about marriage, it's like, dude, Dude, okay, go talk to Dade and share some of what he's smoking, okay? Come on. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Well, 1 John 4, verses 4 on to verse 6. 1 John 4, verses 4 on to verse 6. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you, God the Father dwells within you, saying, than he that is in the world, that spirit of Antichrist, or the spirit of man. Okay? The thing of the world. And like Christianity, especially these, these jerk antinomians, these juvenile. <laughs> Juvenile, school children, uh, antinomians. They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Justifying any sin by your own belief. Bravo, bravo. Now, up to doses. Verse 6, we, saints, are of God. He that knoweth God, relational, heareth us. He that is not of God, heareth not us. Oh no, because they got the television playing. Hereby know we 
the lowercase s, spirit of truth, spirit of truth, lowercase s, one that is imparted. And the lowercase s, spirit of a of error. Yea, hath God said? You know, you're you're being too extreme, you know. You know, you you're taking things that you're saying things that God doesn't want, you know, believers he and all that stupid nonsense. John 8, John 8, John 8, 43 out of 44. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. See, the, people will hear the scriptures, but see, it stays in the pedophagging cloud up here, and it doesn't go down. Okay? It doesn't. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. What was the lusts of Satan? He wanted to be God. He wanted to chart his own path. He wanted to go his own way, going to and fro. Ye shall be like the Most High. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He was a murderer from the beginning, and a boat not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. And in the book of Job, makes a reference about a fire enfolding in upon himself. I think that's in Job. Okay? Speaketh a lie, speaketh of his own. From his own heart, because he is his own standard, or her own God. For he is a liar, and the father of it. Yeah. And of course, and of course, Matthew 15, just two verses. Matthew 15, verses 13 and 14. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Someone who is not truly saved, you know, the fallen way, okay, which has been happening for centuries, but it's getting worse the, fur the further we're going and the sooner or later uh, inevitable redemption of the purchased possession. We're closer today than we were yesterday, okay? Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Instruction in righteousness. Someone who is not genuinely saved, sooner or later, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot, and you, they're going to be made manifest. Like it talks about in 1 John 2, verse 19. Go look that up. And then follow that up with 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Okay? Those two are like peas and carrots. Stop it. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. You know, brethren, it is not up to us to put them in a Camorra lock and force someone to convert. That's not up to us. That's what Rome did. That's what Rome is going to do during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? That's what's going to happen then. Okay? Like I said, there are just people, brethren, verse, uh, 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 John 5, verse 44. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? When you look at the juvenile tactics and the, I mean, it's like, you, you're, it's like you're dealing with teenagers. I mean, it really is. It really is, okay? I mean, it is. I mean, they how they interact with each other, how they speak with each other, what they find amusing and what they condone. We won't even talk about their use of the uh, foul F words and stuff like that. We won't, we won't even talk about that. But how can ye believe which receive honor one of another? The, 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 it's theater! 
win the crowd and you will win your freedom freedom from Christ freedom from walking righteously <laughs> yeah, win the crowd that's what they do they're entertainers they're, it's, it's entertainment man Okay, these people. This is why we can't get along with most Christians, people. I say most because there are saints out there for whatever reason. That's between you and our Father. Don't want to drop that term, Christian. That that's your problem. Okay, that's that's your problem. Is that a, a, an issue of salvation? No. But we've talked about that quite a length. Okay, but I mean, in the whole, saints. And Christians aren't getting along. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 8. If if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the capital S Spirit. See, we saints, we have the Father within us. So the capital S Spirit identifies. Okay? If any bowels of mercy Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded. Now, we are not robots. We are individuals. But see, saints are like-minded. Okay? We are individuals. What I find funny, you don't find funny. What I like to eat, you don't like to eat. Okay? What I consider comfortable, you look at bread. What is that? You know? Okay? Our Lord allots for those differences, but at the end of the day, what is the dividing line? The Father that is within us, and most of all, of course, the Scripture. This, this, this is the deciding factor. This is why our enemies are so scripturally inept and can only cherry pick and give you little things here and there without going deep, because all they can do is, like the Jesuits do, skim off the surface, and oh, the philosophy! The philosophy is sweet. Uh, you should be a philosopher. You already are one. But, I mean, the philosophy, the love of man's wisdom that Christianity employs, it, it, it's, full, it's full of wonder. I mean, it, it is truly full of wonder. This is another reason why you and I as saints can't get along with these people. Because... There are two different things. You know, there is not a like mind. Paul and Barnabas were like minded, but what happened again? Flesh. Flesh got in the way. Okay? Again, you got to remember that can happen. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. And there are idiots out there, and I'm being polite, you know, Calvinists who tell you that your faith isn't your faith. And these are the same types of people, you know, Dudley Do-Right, who will add, probably, I haven't, I'm not looking, probably, you know, the mind of Christ. Like, you've got the mind of Christ. Do I? There are people out there that tell you that. That you have the mind of Christ. Then why does why do I still have thoughts of sin? Well, you have a... Oh, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> okay? Paul missed that me uh, memo in Romans 7. Okay? Why do I still think sinful thoughts? Hmm? How come I can't think things into existence? How come I don't know all things? Huh? You know, if some... Dudley do right dude who's telling you that your faith isn't your faith. 
who, who I, I can only reckon would eventually gravitate into, well, you're, you have the mind of Christ. So you got the mind of the Father. You know, Mary Baker Eddy, uh, the creator of Christian science, said that mind was the Messiah. She actually said that. Mind is the Messiah. And, okay, now think about this. This is how metaphysical mind science ties in with the disgusting, vomitous, antinomianist. They save themselves here because they believe it and they receive it. They believe it and create it in their own minds. See, that's the tie-in with the metaphysical mind science and things like the antinomianist. And also, you know, the name it and claim it, nab it and blab, blab it, nab it, idiots. Okay? All right? So watch out. If someone comes along telling you, well, you got the mind of Christ, laugh at them. Laugh at them. The mind of Christ, what does that mean? We will actually see this by happen chance. Let's continue. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. And this is a, a struggle that I have. I have told you, and I admit freely, I have a pride problem. I do. I do. Okay? You need to be broken of your pride in order for the Lord to save you. You can't trust in yourself. You've got to be broken of that. But see, your spirit and soul dwell here in flesh where sin is. Hence, your flesh. It's like, hey, those of you getting old, like me, you know, your body's like, okay, you, you keep eating like that, I'm going to hurt you. Or you keep going on these long uh, hikes like that without stopping for a little bit, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> okay? All right? We still have pride. But remember, the pride is here. Okay? It starts here, I should say. It starts there. And, and, and brother, this is, this is something, too, to keep in mind. When you are in a, uh, when the Lord puts you into a position, um, it is no longer about you. And see, that's the problem with a lot of people, especially with some of these YouTube ministers. Okay? It's about them. Why you should pay attention to me. Why you should give to me. Why you should listen to me. Blah, 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 blah. I, 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 me, me, me. Don't, don't trust. Hey, hey, don't trust me. You trust this. You trust this. Okay? And if I make a mistake, and I do, I make mistakes. The Lord will correct me here. A brother or a sister be like but Brad you know the one video you said was it what it's like okay brother sister okay come on show me and that I never say that's not you know like oh yeah come on it was like okay you say you okay you see show me come on you do okay and then uh, you know and several brethren have done this and then they show me it's like oh boy but see in a position such as to teach, to preach. We're all in the ministry of reconciliation. But in certain capacities, it's no longer about you. You have to, and this is the hard part, brother. This is what they don't tell you, obviously. It's no longer about you. You have to be available for others, especially when you don't want to be. That's the hard part. That's the hard part when you're having a pity party. And you get the, well, no one wants to listen to me. It's like, you know, you, you, you know that. You know your father? You can talk with your father? Yes, yes. Okay. But see, that problem that we are having is the fleshly problem. 
fleshly problem. And see in our enemies who seek honor one of another, it's all about them. But see, when you are in a position like this, brother, it's no longer about you. We have to be instant in season and out of season, which is something that I struggle with to this day. It's, it never gets easier. It gets harder the longer you go. Okay? So this is something you got to look forward to, son. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. It's not about us. And in like if the Lord puts you into a position like this or whatever it is, the capacity is no longer about you. It's about serving the Lord. And see what the example that we get from our Lord, this mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Christ came to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. We are saints. See, and see, that's a key ingredient that's missing in, say, the disgusting antinomianists. Because they're entertainers. They want, they want the theater. They want the crowd. Look at me. Look at me. You know, it's all about them. And, you know, it's like, here, this is why, you know, I, I think immediately of Kent Helvin and someone else. Uh, it's like, yeah, this is why, you know, give to this ministry, you know. Uh, you know, send your donations, blah, 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 blah. This is what it's like, dude. 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 Who being in the form and Bibles mess this up. Verse 6, you got an NIV? Check it. You got an ESV? Check it. You got an LSD? Or what, 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 the, the, what used to be the, um, oh, MacArthur's version, the LSD. What was that based off? Doesn't matter, based off of it, doesn't matter. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, because he is God the Father. Verse 7 mind of Christ to serve but made himself of no reputation well good name is rather be chosen than silver bread you're right you're right pal whose name hmm? Jesus which Jesus yeah, whose name? Calvin? Luther? Rachman? MacArthur? White? Hmm? Whose name? But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And you can check your margin there. You can tie that in with Romans chapter 8. And being found in fashion as a man. See, this, this is what you devils don't get. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Okay? Flesh did not become God. Okay? Like, like you devils do. You, you, you twist everything. Twist everything. You, you're all backwards. Okay? You're all backwards. Of course. Because you serve Satan. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. Go ahead and read on your own time. Continue, please. Romans 12, Romans 12, verses 9, on to verse 16. Let love be without dissimulation. Love. This love? What love? Huh? What love? Oh, God loves you. Yeah, yeah. Shut up. Heresy. <laughs> 
Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Abhor extreme hatred. Cleave to that which is good. And there is none good but God. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. And honor preferring one another. And honor preferring one another. See, again, that's why, you know, our door is always open to the saints. Okay? We do like, it's like, hey, Brad, we're, we're coming by. Okay, when? Okay, well, all right. See you when you get here. You know, you have to, like, hey, Brad, we're outside. Okay, and go out. Hey, hey, you know, our door is always open. You know? If, uh, if I don't forget the health phone in here, um, you know, email, call, whatnot, you know, I know, I, I, I know, I know, I got to get better at that, I know that, I know that, okay? But see, we prefer one another. What fellowship hath light with darkness? How can a saint spend umpteen amounts of hours with lost people? For example, now, there are some things, like, for example, you might have a lost mother, a lost father, a lost sister, a lost brother, you know, <laughs> we've already addressed that, where, you know, it's like, okay, you, we had, you know, earthen, we had the same father and mother, so it's like, okay. But even that, even that, there's only so far that a saint can go without, it's like, oh, get away, okay? It's like, all right. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. I want to be in fellowship with saints. <laughs> Any day over anything that the world offers. That's the treasure. That's the beauty of being like-minded the unity of brethren dwelling together in unity. Okay? Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Like charity, you know, self-sacrifice. Rejoicing in hope, and the Lord Jesus Christ is our hope. Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. You know, next time you, you come across something, it's like, well, let's pray about it. Pray about it. All right, and what are we reading to? Verse 16. Distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. I said, our door is always open. Bless, with, bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Oh, thank you for persecuting me. Oh, Lord, let no. Truth is a blessing. Whether it's by reading, you know, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but we are ambassadors for Christ. They don't want to hear the word. What are they, what's left? Your example. That's how we bless those who persecute us. Okay? Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. That's been a staple of my own personally. I've tried to at least, you know. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things. Oh, you see, you see this exemplified in so many of the King Game Bob Weaving, whatever, uh, ministries out there. Oh, you sure do. With the one guy set up on a high horse. Okay, oh, yeah. But we are told, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. You know, right away again, um, you know, and, you know, Ken Helvin, it's not a fair thing because that guy's a Jesuit. But it's like, you know, one of these big shot, hot shot guys like, you know, Robert Breaker or you know, some of the other guys, even do from Maine. What, 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 what would they do if someone of low estate 
all of a sudden showed up at your door. Well, you don't, you're right, I don't. I don't understand. What if, so, what if that's something that the Lord orchestrated? We're supposed to be given to the hospitality. Now, 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 hey, <laughs> okay, there are a lot of crazy people out there. There are a lot of people who say that they is and they ain't. Okay, that's a legitimate thing. It's like you don't put, you know, like my address is not readily available for just any anybody. I mean, but, I mean, the saints, a saint, someone who is actually saved and shows up, okay, that's a different story. All right? You know, it's, it's one of those things of balance. You can't trust people now. No, you can't. And that's a legitimate thing to say. Yes, that is true. But you know, you gotta try every once in a while. Every once in a while, you gotta, I mean, you do. I mean, you don't have to. But I mean, you, you, you know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta put this out there. And yeah, it might be spat on and wipes off. Might be bitten. It bruises up, but it'll heal. Okay? You sometimes still gotta do that nowadays. Because what happens if you don't, that's when cults are born. That's when cults are born. And uh, what are they? Um, uh, cult properties where you go to a certain place down south in dinosaur adventure land or whatnot. Okay? Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 15. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Hmm. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 20 on to verse 23. And here, and here is where we run into the guys who want to yoke themselves up with Rome once a year. Okay, I, I have to go there, okay, because they hide behind all things are lawful for me. And then they take a holiday and try to scripturally twist it into a holy day. That's heresy. Okay, that is heresy. But uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 20 under verse 23. But I say... That the things with the Gentiles sacrifice, but I say the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. I would not. What does that mean? Free will, choice. <laughs> for, <laughs> for whatever reason, whatever reason you might want to justify, okay, dear brother, you might want to make the choice to go and fellowship with people who are totally wrong scripturally, totally wrong doctrinally, doctrinally justify sin, and you, you might want to, you, you know, we're going to see this, okay, you, why do you want to be in fellowship with that, like people like that. How can you? How can you get along with people like that? How can you get along with people who just believe in Z? You know? How can you? How can ye believe? Ye that seek honor one from another, what honor? Oh, good to see you, buddy. You know, bro hug kind of bros stuff. Hmm. Hmm. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Look at King Solomon, dude. <laughs> he, and he had the means and the provisions to do it. He did. He wanted his cake and eat it too. He tried to walk both sides. Like the antinomianist, whatever, the free grace pond scum does. Have your cake and eat it too. You can have the best of both worlds. You can you can sit at the king's table. Uh, excuse me, the table of devils, and drink the wine that comes from the Vatican. And also, you can have all these blessings because you save yourself by your own belief. 
Solomon tried that. Didn't work well with him. Not at all. Not at all. Mm. Are you happy, by the way? Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> I know, I, I said, I said. You're, you're, so, you're just such a cutie pie there, boy. Okay, enough. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. All right, sorry. Mm. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be... Mm. <laughs> sorry. Uh. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Oh, I was thinking it. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? The antinomianist, yes, huh? And here, right here, see, this is a sad thing. When you got brethren who, this, this is undeniable truth right here. Verse 23, all things are lawful for me. You can do whatever you want. You can. You'll pay a heavy price for it. Think about, think about that. What, what's preventing you, say, from going out there and doing just as, like, say, the antinomianist does, who's of the world? What's preventing you from doing that? Is the Lord forcibly holding you back? No, or else you'd be a robot like Calvin preaches. See, again, free will, making the right choices. Okay? But see, all things are lawful for us. We can do anything when you think about it. Do we do anything we want? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> and when you do, and you have a license to do that with your stupid just believe and receive, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, all kinds of fun things could happen, can't they? But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. And again, you know, how you serve <laughs> your God reflects your God. Okay? The way we saints serve our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, reflect him. And, you, you know, you keep this in mind, you guys who are deceived. Next time you're watching one of them live streams and you're hearing these guys blurt out profanity, talk inappropriately about inappropriate things, and then justify it, I mean, okay, using foul curse words and whatnot, and they justify it. They do. They do. What do you do, huh? Well, all things are lawful for you. But see, see, and here the thing, you know, preferring one another in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, okay? Verses 1 and 2. Paul. Preferring one another. You know, I'm not going to have fellowship with lost people. Okay? I'm not. <laughs> All right? All right? I mean, like I said earlier... You know, we have members of our immediate relational family that are lost. If, if you don't, then, well, good if you don't. But most people within their family, you know, like I, I, I think of a dear, a sweet brother uh, from overseas who's the only saved person in a household uh, rife with Catholicism. Uh, and I, I, we, pr we pray for that dear brother every single, well, like we pray for a lot of you. We pray for you every single day. It's like, I, I couldn't imagine that, man. I, I couldn't. But yet in a weird little kind of way, I can. Anyway, anyway. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. Dude! You're philosophers. That's all you speak of. That's what you speak in. Philosophy. 
it, it, it's full of wonder. I mean, it, it's, it's full of wonder that people like you are able to deceive masses of people like that. It, it's, well, you know, we're seeing the fulfillment of Scripture, what Paul talked about. You know, and there's a famine in the land of hearing the words of the Lord. Even though you do reference a few verses, but that's as far as you go. You can't go any deeper because you're all lost. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ. I, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Who's dead to the world and to themselves? And see, the antinomianist is not. Dude, you're not. Shut up. You're not. You're not dead to the world. You guys are all about the world. That's all you go about to justify you living in the world and being like the world. Come on. Come on. At least have the stones to admit that. Even though you make it plainly obvious to any saint. Okay. But in, in, in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 on to verse 20 now. Okay. And here's the thing. You know, save anything, uh, uh, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Who's really saved? Who's been to the cross and died to themselves and are dying dead to that? But like I said, Christianity, you're not, you're not dead to that. You're all about that. Because all you do is look to find, you look in here and cherry pick on how to justify being in that. <laughs> you know? Come on. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 on to 20. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the capital S Spirit of God dwelleth in you? You know, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? <clears throat> if any man, any man, that includes you, defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And it's interesting, too. A lot of the antinomianists are all about going to phallus houses, too. I, I find that very, you know, that, that, you know, you know, novices and babes are one thing. But those of you who are claiming to be saved for years and years, and you're neck deep in this antinomianist pond scum doctrine, this free grace nonsense, you deserve what you get. You're lost just like they are. Okay. What the Spirit of the Lord in you can't show you the stuff that even a babe in Christ who is a saint can get? Okay. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, whoa, all you antinomianists with your philosophy and your vain deceit. Yeah. Let him become a fool, fool to, in the eyes of the world. That he may be wise. Dude, your, your stupid antinomianist doctrine. See, there are those of the world who can see it for, it's like, dude, that's stupid. It don't make sense. But then again, someone who wants to, uh, you know, who, who truly wants a relationship with the Lord, but along come you devils and give them the fake Jesus and a fake gospel, and they get deceived thinking that they're serving the real one. It's like, oh, wow, Jesus is okay with me being just like the world with no changes? And see, a change brought about by being a new creature, not by something that they flip a switch and they do themselves. See, change will come from being a new creature. And it's not one that's held at gunpoint either. But see, we have, like I said, we have to make the right choices. Okay? And a changed life ought to come from being made a new creature. And you're a new creature when the Lord is within you. 
That's what makes you a new creature. The, the, these, these free gracers, they're not new creatures. Okay? Babes and novices aside, they're not saved. How can you believe? How can ye believe? Those of you who seek honor one from another, your bro hug mentality, you know. Uh, amen, amen, brother. <laughs> Idiots. Uh, uh, okay, let's continue. For the wisdom of this world, you know, philosophy, is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Vain believers, you know. And not, not that uh, Richlingite thing. It's like, your pastor and uh, belief is in vain. Do you understand that? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, the one uh, I told you, the one dude put a link in one of the things, and one of, one of the moderators removed it. Uh, that's okay. They don't have to answer to me. And I, and I watched that video about Mr. Martin Richling. And it's like, wow. Wow, chip off the old block there, pal. Okay. All right. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, not a building. This. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. 1 out of verse 7. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. It's a choice. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay? Remember, God is not forcing you to do anything. Okay? He's not. He's not. You have to make the right choices. Okay? All right? With all lowliness and meekness and long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, you know, it, it, you know, with some of the saints that put up with me, it's like, wow, brother, how you put up with me, I, I don't know. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the capitalist spirit in the bond of peace. Now, that does, now see, amongst saints, we don't compromise truth. Never compromise truth. Christianity, for the sake of peace, what they call peace, peace, like you said, brother, um, peace, peace, and there is no peace. They want you to compromise truth in order to get along. Okay? To chades with that. Okay? There is one body and one capital S spirit. One God is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? You Trinitarians, you have three gods. Brilliant. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling. And who's our hope? First Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. Oh, one faith. The faith that was once delivered unto the saints. What's that faith in? The Lord. The antinomianist. What's their faith in? Their faith. Not the Lord, but their faith, the, their, the faith itself. Never answered that one, did you? Anyway. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Everybody! <laughs> no! Everybody does not have God the Father dwelling within them, you universalist idiot. Okay? No. No. God gave you life. Yes, he did. But God does not dwell inside 
Everybody! That That's crazy. I wish it were so. The Lord actually wishes it was so. You could prove that easily. But that's not the case. Okay? And what? Everybody going to be saved? No. No. Not everyone is going to be saved. Okay? That That's... That's one of the, the universalist bent. That everybody's eventually going to be... No, they're not. No, they're not. In you all, those who are saved, every saint has the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within us. And see, you, you fake people. Some of you are really good at faking it. But just like with the Egyptian magicians, every pun intended, they can only go so far. It's like when somebody does <laughs> jack smack. <laughs> you, guys, you guys actually consider him scholarly in a way? Woo! <laughs> come on, dude. Come, come on there, sweetie pie. You, you ought to know better than that yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but see, this is why these devils can't get into the deepness of Scripture without the help from the Vatican, and even that is flawed because it's from Satan. And you got to remember, Satan knows this book. He knows it better than even Peter Ruckman thought he did. Satan knows the Scriptures better than any man on earth. Of course, the exception was when uh, God the Father, you know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, was on the earth. Okay, he's the one who wrote the scripture, you know. But one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all, those who are saved, above all, better than us. Ah, just believe and receive. Oh, you're better than God is. That's what you were saying. <laughs> because you guys, again, by faith, <laughs> through grace. That's what, that's what Antony, antinomianism is. It starts by faith. It's like faith, then you get grace. It's by grace through faith. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Crazy. But unto one, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Grace is unmerited favor. Okay? You're hearing the gospel, the true gospel. You're receiving grace. Okay? It's by his grace, grace first. And our faith. Okay? All right? Skip a little now to verses 11 on to verse 19. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Different positions within the body of Christ. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all, those who are saved, come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And unfortunately, I do not think till we all come in the unity of the faith, I only really think that all saints. Because again, the example of Paul and Barnabas. Okay, they had a dissension. Did they have the same faith? Yes, it says unity of the faith. Yes, but see, they had a dissension. Okay? And there are those out there who are saints, but yet we have differing opinions on certain things. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. We'll all see Jesus and we'll sing a victory or however it goes. I 
I don't think, I mean, I could be wrong about this. Um, while we are still here, especially with between saints, we're not all going to get along. But see, that unity of the faith that we have in one Father, our God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. See, here's the thing. If you are a diehard believer in a three-person God, we can't get along because they're two different gods. The Trinity is a three-person little G God. <laughs> Notice how I said that? But God, who is our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? One God, three gods. How is that, how, how that going to work? It doesn't. You know, until you've been devastated and broken, how are you going to ever be able to utter the name Jesus Christ? How? See, that's a requirement. It's just there in a lot of Christianity, which it is being offered on to you. It isn't. It is not. <clears throat> and verse 14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and Satan going to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine by the slight of men yea hath God said and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh it maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. See, saints, even though saints can disagree, it happens because of fleshly things. At the end of the day, that love, like I said, there are saints out there who I don't like and don't like me. If they came to me in a pinch and a need, the door would be open. Okay? That's there. That's there. Absolutely. And that's a trait among saints. But does that mean we're always going to get, uh, get along and agree? No. Unfortunately. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Having the understanding darkened, departing from evil. Hey, yeah, I believe and receive and you can do anything you want. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Yes, the gods of lasciviousness. Beg your pardon, I'm writing that down. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore, Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. It doesn't say make any excuse and justification you can in order to keep that unclean thing, which antinomianism gives you. See, that's why that's so popular. Because these guys do these philosophical gymnastics cherry-picking verses of Scripture with no exposition, with no context. You don't even know what that means, you idiot. Okay? And, and, and they can justify, just like the Jesuits, with the Jesuit constitutions, which unfortunately you can only get in Latin. I would have loved to have gotten to read some of those. But like just like the Jesuit order, who uh, the, the antinomists work for, uh, with, their, with their, you know, fake grace philosophy, their fake Jesus and their fake gospel, they can justify anything, man. That's why you people like it. 
Them, them guys are smart enough to make the scripture say anything they wanted to say to justify any sin. And they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they, they really do. <laughs> they do. But wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And here are some familiar verses. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Okay, you know this. But see, Christianity, antinomianism, dive right into it because, hey, don't worry about it. Forget about it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. <laughs> And be not conformed to this world. Antinomianist version. Be conformed to this world. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good. Who are we proving that to? An acceptable and perfect will of God. And again, when you got some jerk going around using philosophy, Taking one verse and then you giving you 20 minutes of philosophy to justify sin. Hey, there you go. There you go. Colossians 3. Colossians 3. Colossians 3 verses 1 and verse 8. If. If. Ye be risen with Christ, born again. Ah, born again is for the Jews. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's so full of wonder how you guys are able to get away with such nonsense. Then again, you know just as well as I do that most people don't want to hear the truth. And with your churches, you know, Rome, Satan's church, yea hath God said, and all the Bibles they put out. It's full of wonder. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. And see, the antinomianist takes this and twists it. <laughs> Set your affection on things of the earth, not on things above, because hey, you got a license, dude. Live it up. We are dead. And your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, morte, kill. <laughs> kill, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth. Put down, you know, when you go and, like, I put down Fritz, my cat. What are you doing? That that was that was great, uh, you know. For a while, I you know, whenever it come to mortify, I would always go put down, and then uh, dear brother's like, well, you know, Brad, morte, mortify, morte, dead. You know, and, and I think it was you yourself who even said about Fritz. It's like, okay, you put Fritz down. What did you do? You killed him. Can't argue with that, you know, but. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And all of them is with our forms of idolatry. All of them are. Because covetousness, you want to engage in fornication, uncleanness, and order, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence. Hey, here's your license. Just believe and receive and go ahead. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. That's talking about saved people who mess up. Uh, 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 hey, genius, read the next verse. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. Child of diso children of disobedience is not a reference on to saved people who mess up. Prove it. Verse 7. In which ye also walked. Past tense. Sometime you were once lost, now you're saved. 
So verse 6 is talking about people who are lost. Children of disobedience are lost people. Not saved brethren who get messed up. Watch out for that one. Okay. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. Okay. Okay. Ephesians. Oh, we're reading to verse 8, aren't we? Yes, we are. Pick your part. But now he also put off all these. Anger. I struggle with that. Wrath. I struggle with that. Malice. Blasphemy. Filthy communication out of your mouth. That, is, that includes profanity, which the antinomianist has no problem with. It's like, it's like, people, what, what can't you understand? Okay, God is not for these people cursing like that in their live streams like they always do. Okay? And no one ever says anything? Well, that doesn't, it proves that, number one, there is no fear of God before their eyes, and their service unto the Lord means nothing on how they represent Him. Says a lot. Okay? Says a lot. <laughs> it says a lot. <laughs> All right? But filthy communication is also another Jesus. One God in three person. And another gospel. Believe and receive. Go to uh, Christ's church. That he found. You're elect or non-elect. Whatever heresy you want to throw in there. Okay? Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Verses 6 on verse 10. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Oh, philosophy and vain deceit. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. We already proved what a child of disobedience is. It's not a safe person who gets messed up. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And, you know, these Christians, <laughs> the light that they are walking after is that angel of light whose ministers transform themselves as the ministers of righteousness. You, you cute little sweetie pie, you. Oh, you little darling, huh? Yeah, sending people to hell. <laughs> it's not funny. It's tragic. Well, what do you do? People want that. Okay. Okay. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And, and, and see right, and, and right there, dude. Right there. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. These antinomianists in their live streams. And the language the profanity and the innuendo and the inappropriate and disgusting vile things that they talk about. They are telling you that is acceptable with the Lord. No, it isn't. See, they're serving Satan. Forget about it. And see, the sooner, the, the closer we are getting to the redemption of the purchased possession, it's getting worse. I mean, hey, hey, the one thing you, sweetheart, you have going for you is um, the only time your nonsense is going to be stopped is in Revelation 18 with the death of Roman Catholicism and inevitably our Lord's second coming when we come back with him and you guys go off someplace. Okay? 
So you're you're going to keep you know you're going to keep growing in momentum, and see you guys know that. That's why you're so pompous and arrogant because you know that we saints are very small, and you also know that we saints don't get along with each other. See, and that's another thing too, brethren. That's another unfortunate thing about saints when we don't get along with each other because of fleshly things. Um, the enemies can use that and catapult off it. The enemies who preach this nonsense, number one, they know that it's their, this is their hour and the power of darkness. They know that we saints are not going to be able to stop that. We know that. We know that we know they know that we know and that kind of stuff. They know that we saints. That, because it's written down for us. Okay, it's just going to keep getting worse. It's going to get so bad until then we, the saints, come up hither, and then, then your, your real license to sin is going to be granted to you. Without the body of Christ there, these guys like little sugar britches up there are going to be, oh, so rife, even more so today. And without the body of Christ present on the earth, but see, there are going to be those who get left behind who are going to have sense enough. It's like, oh, we missed it. We missed it. And then they're going to realize, it's like, oh. And then they're going to see that man of sin, the son of perdition. And it's like, you know, that, that multitude of people that get slain right away. Okay, that's those are people, I believe, who get left behind, who wake up after it's too late, who have been deceived by these guys. And it'd be like, hey, that's... They're, it's not by grace through faith. Hey, hey, and then, you know, because during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to be you Muslims that are going to be the center of attention. Remember, I truly believe that during the time of Jacob's trouble, he's going to call you all Christians. Because, hey, he's going to go into the rebuilt temple looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus in the visage, I believe. And it's going to be, hey, I am. There you go. There you go. There you go. Let's continue. Where where do we leave off here? Okay. <coughs> uh, approve. Okay, we're, we're done with that. Now, 1 Corinthians 5. Now, you might be saying, well, Brad, we're, we're supposed to be, you know, you're saying detach yourself from the world. That, we're in the world. Not of it. Christianity. Antinomianists. They are of the world. Not only are they in the world, they are of the world. Therefore they speak of the world and the world heareth them. 1 Corinthians 5, verses 9, unto the close. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company you with fornicators. Yet not altogether with fornicators of this world, or with covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, or then, for then must ye needs go out of the world. And we're ambassadors for Christ. See, we've already shown that we're not supposed to have fellowship with these people. We're not supposed to hang out with these people. But see, we go out in the world, we are to be witnesses unto the lost. Okay, this does not mean, like some of you might be wanting to deceive yourselves. It's like, well, Brad, then we should just stay at home in our little thing. No, we got to get out there. You know, sometimes you got to go to the grocery store. Got to go get gas in your vehicle. Sometimes it would help you to get out and go on a walkabout every once in a while. Okay, we are in the world. We don't belong to the world. Christianity, to, be the, to win the world, be the world. When in Rome, do as the Romans. And hey, just believe and receive. You can be of the world, in the world, and not worry about anything. Hey, you're covered. So, that flippancy, that arrogance that they have, it, it, it's full of wonder. <laughs> it's full of wonder. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called... A brother. In Christian visits. You are because you say you are, huh? You're my brother because you say you are, huh? I think perhaps maybe. No. 
But now I have written unto you not to keep company if uh, any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an, idol or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such a one know not to eat. And here, and here is, of course, the ultimate, you know, about the stupid antinomianist. What have I to do to judge them that are without also? Uh, for what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judges. How? How? Right here. Right here. Okay? Yes, he does. This is how he judges you. And we saints, we judge ourselves first. Therefore, we're going to judge you by the same thing. We've covered this. Okay? And when you've got, watch out for Christians. It's like, only God can judge me. You're right. He judges you through the scripture, and he's using his saint to judge you. Okay? Because the saint judges themselves first, like we're commanded to. Hence, we judge you by the same standard. Someone like a lot of antinomianists, and also it appears a lot of Calvinists, don't like, uh, not, you know, traditional Calvinists, they, they're crazy, but a lot of the newer, like, hyper-Calvinist people, uh, crazy, uh, they got a problem with judgment. If anyone has a problem with judgment, that that that's somebody you really want to avoid. Trust me. Okay? But them that are without God judgeth. Therefore put away from your uh, from among yourselves that wicked person. Second Corinthians six verse eighteen. And will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Romans 8, verses 5 on to verse 10. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Every single antinomianist out there. Every single one of them. They're all about the flesh. How to justify yourself and justify the sins of the flesh. That's all you're about. And of the mind, okay? Because remember, to you guys, Messiah is mine, like Mary Baker Eddy. It's, it's full of wonder that not, uh, not a lot of people make that tie-in. Full of wonder. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the capital S spirit, the things of the spirit. Capital S. For to be carnally minded is death, and the wages of sin is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And as the link will be in the description box, the antinomianist says that we're not under any moral obligation to any law. Though well, the law of Christ, uh, yeah, and that day, that link will be in the description box for you, where we, through scripture, debunk. The heresy of antinomianism. Free grace. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And their cute little argument, like something like Sweetie Pie would come up with. It's like, well, your spirit is slower in your flesh. Yes. But see, what are we walking in? Okay. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the capital S Spirit of God dwell in you. See, you're a new creature. New creature. You antinomianists are not new creatures. You're lost. Okay. Novices aside. Novices aside. Okay? Now, if any man have not the capital S Spirit of Christ, Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. <laughs> And the Lord is that spirit. Hello. Okay. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And what are we reading on to? Uh, verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the capitalist spirit is life because of righteousness. And you can go ahead and read the uh, from verses 1 on to verse 5. Go ahead and read that. Pause and read that and learn about how your precious little flesh is. Okay? 
And now skip to verses 14 to verse 16. For as many as are led by the capital S Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. But ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Bondage. Antinomianism is a spirit of bondage. Well, how so? Because there is no freedom from sin, but, uh, but contrary, a license, an excuse to indulge in sin without any repercussion or worry because you save yourself by your own belief. You guys are filth. You really are, sweetheart. <laughs> God loves you. But ye have received the capital S spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You know, sealed into the day of redemption. The capital S spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And you can cross-reference this in 1 John chapter 3. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. And we read 17 again. I wish I wrote 16, but we read to 17. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 16. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David, king of the Jews, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes. This is not Calvinism. God elected the way of the cross. And to go the way of the cross means death to self, brokenness, contrition, not hiding under the umbrella. We're all sinners taking personal responsibility and accountability. Your hand held the hammer and the nail and you put them on the cross. Three, having the hell scared out of you. And see, in that moment, which you wicked, devilish, filthy, vile antinomianists can't understand, the lesser yourself, the lesser yourself cannot wait to cry out upon the greater. You, you guys can't understand that because you are your own saving grace. You're your own God and you've never been broken. That's why the like little sugar britches up there is like prayers of work, repentance is a work, calling on No, it isn't. It's a requirement. Yes, it is. Something that you know nothing about. Because you've never been there. Because, like I said, any saint will tell you this. Any saint will tell you this. The, the, I, I always use the sinking submarine thing. You know, but see, the antinomianist has an escape hatch that they devise themselves. No. You're on that submarine against the wall. There comes the water. And the only thing that's going to save your rear end, Lord, save and none of you, none of you antinomianists have been there. It's obvious. Not obvious to all, of course, and that's what you guys bank on. But to the saint, it's obvious. Obvious. And you, dear brother, I know, I know you know that. You know that. You know that. <clears throat> Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Dead to the world, dead to ourselves. But, you know, hey, you're not bound to any morality of the law. See, that's the thing. The morality. 
on the law. With it, check out the video. It'll be the first one at the top. Okay, gods of lasciviousness. Be the very first one at the top for you. Okay, check that one out. If you don't want to check it out, then shut up. Okay, God loves you. Go to hell. Okay. It is a faithful saying: If we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. That's not salvation. Okay, you want to make the choice and not do what he says and not live according to his word and live it up, but you actually are a saint, you'll go to heaven. Once saved, always saved. But your testimony will be shot. Your fruit will be rancid and stanking. Okay, you'll be useless. You'll be useless. And when you die and go to be with the Lord, he's going to be ashamed of you for eternity. I don't know one genuine saint who is okay with that, save the fake antinomianist. Because if you deny him, he's not going to deny you salvation or else we got a big problem, Houston. But he can deny blessings, mercy, grace, provision. He can deny you all kinds of things, but he won't deny you his salvation. Why? If we believe not, and Mr. You know, Marty over there, it's like you, your salvation is in a present tense. You have to continually believe. That's why your faith is in your faith. Because you have to continually believe. You know? You have to continually believe. You know? Your time passed in belief is in vain. You understand that? God doesn't care about your belief yesterday. Your, your salvation is in the present tense. Being justified by His grace. That's my uh, Mr. Richland impersonation. Reminds me of the hunter a little bit with that voice of his. And y'all say, I got an annoying voice, huh? <laughs> if we believe not, yet he abideth faith. He cannot deny himself. Why? Because, see, when the Lord genuinely saves you, okay, and seals you until the day of redemption, Ephesians 5, verse 30. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. And you are sealed with the Lord until the day of redemption. Romans, now we're done with First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 6. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. Verses 1 on to verse 6. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. And not to please ourselves. Before my relationship with my earthen father went south, he thinks I'm a heretic and I think he's a heretic. Okay? That's unfortunate. I love my father on the, of earth. I love my earthen father. I would like to see him one more time before I go home to be with the Lord. I really do. Um, I do. He's my father. You know, my mother's in hell, okay? And I have not seen my earthen father for a while. We've been going on four years here, so it was at least two years. Uh, so at least I, I have not seen my earthen father for about six years now, I think. Something around those lines, okay? He once told me long ago, when I was just a babe, um, I asked him, I was a babe, I didn't know. It's like, why aren't you a pastor? Because he had my, my earthen father, he got a piece of paper from Moody. Now this is years ago, people, remember this. Uh, my father did that way before I was saved. Um, okay, back when Moody, which was still under the control of the Jesuit order, but far different, better than it is nowadays. 
but he has, he has the piece of paper. He has the credentials that he could show to people. And I asked him, I've never forgotten this, and I understand what he meant. Like, why aren't you a, pa a pastor? He's like, you know what kind of responsibility that takes? I do. Not being a pastor, but being in a position where the Lord will have you to comfort brethren to speak with brethren, to hear brethren. Ministry, I, I, I'm a firm believer in the ministry of presence. I know that's not in scripture. You know, sometimes the best thing we can do as brethren is just listen to one another. Listen to each other. Be there for one another. You know, there are a lot of brethren that I know, they need an ear so they can get things off their chest. That's, and this is what you have to look forward to, brother. That's, that's a high calling. And not everyone is, can do that. And I struggle with that. I really do. Verse 2, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. And this is where the mind of Christ comes in. See, again, watch out for guys. Who are going to tell you, number one, that your faith isn't yours, it's Jesus's. That's a heretic right away. Okay? <laughs> Jingle all the way, buddy. Okay? But also watch out for someone that says that you actually have the literal mind of Christ. Run away from someone like that. That, that That's crazy. That's crazy. You, you, you talk about something that's blasphemy. Okay? I have the mind of Christ, but yet I still think s sinful thoughts. I, and I have the mind of Christ. Huh? Huh? Yeah! Right! <laughs> Crazy. Is it, don't you ever... ever it, it, it's like in the, 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 the guys who say you got to stop sinning. Okay, you, you come across those people. Just, just get away from me. Kick a little gravel at them if you got to. Like, go, go away. Go, you know, you you go have fun. God loves you. Go ahead, you know. Up the dosage there, buddy. Take another pill. God loves you. Go go away. Okay, get away from people like that. All right? For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell me. Jesus, who is God, the Father, came not to be served, but to serve. God the Father. And see, here, here's the nonsense heresy of the Trinity. You have the one in the middle of the three-person God who, you know, is not the Father. Washing the feet of the disciples, the apostles. But see, God who is one God of spirit, soul, and body. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. God the Father, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. The Son of David, washing the feet of the apostles. God, the Father. See, you Trinitarians minimalize, diminish the beauty of John 13 with your one in the middle, three person, heretical, satanic trinity. Because, hey, to you Trinity Trinitarians, Jesus is not the Father. Ah, uh, Jesus is the Father. Okay? All right? And see, you guys... Diminish the beauty of that. God the Father. God manifest in the flesh. Washing the feet. The rank stinking. Have you ever worn leather sandals on a 90 degree day in sand? In a sandy condition? Huh? Huh? Have you ever worked on hard work? Wearing leather sandals, okay, with no socks. Oh, God forbid. Okay, have you, have you ever done that before? Huh? Huh? Have you? Uh, beg my, uh, pardon my crudeness, the stench 
Okay? And God the Father washing their feet. See, the mind of Christ was a mind of service, of charity, self-sacrifice, being concerned for others. And that is what this is, brother. I struggle with that because, hey, you know, I have basketball days. I, I, the basketball days have been wonderful. Wonderful. Pity party. But see, in this position, and, and, and see, you got to get away also from the, oh, shucks, I guess I got to. If that is your mentality, well, I guess I got to, then you blew it. Then you blew it. See, the mind of Christ, he wanted to do that. Not a force. See, we're not forced. You have to want to do that. Because God loveth a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver. If you're doing it begrudgingly, then you've missed it. Remember what I'm telling you, son. For whatsoever things were written for a time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience, I'm not a doctor, are you? And consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. That ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 1. Philippians 1. We're almost done. We're almost done. Verses 19 on to verse 28. Philippians 1. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the capitalist spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or death. Magnified. Your, the way you serve our Lord reflects Him. Keep that in mind when you are watching, listening to talk show hosts or these antinomious devils. They're not representing the true God of Scripture. They're not. They're not. For to me to live, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. See, Paul also, Paul, in service to others, and that which cometh upon me daily, the care of the churches, Okay, who 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 was how's it say that uh, who's uh, who's tempted and I burn not, you know. Paul was you know in Acts he you know he took a moment it's like he just to chill, and then greatest Diana of the Ephesians, you know Paul, the greatest of the Church of God, even he had moments just like. Who's there for me? Remember, Paul had a pride problem. You can see that in, a in Acts chapter 21. Okay, Paul had a pride problem. Even, you know, lest I be exalted above measure, there was a thorn given me in my flesh. But my grace is sufficient for thee. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Uh, uh, instead of uh, butchering that, let's, let's, let's go to that. Let's go to that in 2 Corinthians 12, verse uh, 12, 9 and 10. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength, see, I corrected myself, don't get ahead of me. My strength is made perfect in weakness. 
Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Why? Because the Lord is your strength. The Lord is our strength, dear brother, sister. And also in, uh, what is that? What is that, brother? Uh, 1 Timothy 6. No, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, verses 16 on to verse 18. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Back to Philippians chapter 1. Let's continue. Verse 22, But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I quat not. What not. It baffles me that the Lord will have me to talk with saints, to fellowship with saints, who are better than I am. You know, we had, um, we had two brethren, two sisters, and a little girl join us, and it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. I mean, and uh, the, the dear brother Bobby, um, he's such a, such a sweetheart. Yeah, I mean, these are people who are better than me in every way, shape, and Brother Alexander, you know, these, these are people who are better than I am. But yet the Lord has allowed me the privilege to fellowship with these people, to be there for them. <laughs> and see, that's, that's the thing, brother, about this. And that is what is being lost in the majority of, of what you guys are seeing on YouTube because it's all about their ministry it's all about them it's all about how they look it's not about giving well I've been there done that we still got time and and that's 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 the thing to go to be with the Lord amen absolutely hallelujah Far better. But see, the Lord, if you're still here, sit. Then there must be a reason. And I am the one, I am one, I know there are, we can discuss that, but I am one, I firmly believe that as you, if you are a saint still on earth, then you have a purpose. God has a purpose for you. And yes, God has a plan for your life. Christianity uh, twists that and makes you the be-all, end-all. But no, God does have a purpose for your life. To glorify Him. And I need to remember that it's not about me. I have a pride problem, dude. And there are moments when, <laughs> you no, know, you know, doing, doing my best to, to keep up with the diet, to eat healthy, you know, staying away from uh, getting all that high fructose, uh, however you pronounce it, uh, corn syrup out of your diet, which is poison. And yet, you're doing all these things, and then you chest acts up. Pride. Oh, a little, oh, a little pride, huh? You know, when a woman is with child, your life is no longer your own. All things are lawful for you. Yes, they are. My life is mine. All things are lawful for me. But see, my life is mine. 
This is what, and brother, this, and uh, brother, this might be one of the things that might scare you. I understand, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. My life is mine. My life is supposed to be used in service to you. Verse 23, For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. <laughs> For, yeah, man. Okay? And, you know, who am I? I'm nobody. Brad, I'm, I'm no one. I'm nothing. <laughs> That's sugar bridges. He'll tell you. <laughs> I'm nobody. I'm nothing. But yet, I'm here. You're here, saints. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith. That your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. And as we addressed in Tuesday's video, this love, watch out for this, God loves you. That's not true love. True love hurts at first. That's glory. Oh, love has compassion. Love has affection. Love has romance. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Love has empathy, sympathy. Yes. Yes. All those, those things are there in love. But you also got to remember, like Shakespeare said, in order to be kind, sometimes you have to be cruel in order to be kind. Sometimes the ones you truly love, your brethren, in order to grow in the Lord, they have to rebuke you every once in a while. That's true love. And to have true love, you can't have one without the other. You can't have all... Sh I mean, we will in heaven. Absolutely. But see, right now we're down here. And down here, you can't have all the sugar and sweetness. You have to have a little tart with it every once in a while. You know what I'm saying? And when one is at offering you only this sugary sweet thing, your teeth are going to rot. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one, lowercase s, spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Which gospel? Believe and receive? Brokenness, contrition, fear, calling upon the name of the Lord? Or save yourself? Most of you go for option B, right? And right here, verse 28. And this, this is why, you know, little sugar britches and stuff like that. Little sweetheart. Yeah. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries. <laughs> like I said. Which is to them an evident token of perdition. But to you of salvation and that of God. And a little more. See a saint, saint, a saint, or or a, or a sweetie pie. You know, guys like that are still up at this uh, point. But First Peter chapter three, we're almost done. First Peter chapter three, verses eight on to verse twelve. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous, 
hey, you know what? It could be a courtesy for every once in a while. Brother, it's like, hey, Brad, you know, there are certain things you say and you need to shut up. <sighs> yeah, you're right. It's a courtesy. That's love. But see, to Christianity, that's hate. Love and hate, right. Uh, not rendering evil for evil. Or railing for railing. But contrary wise, blessing. Oh, thank you for persecuting me. Oh, thank you for doing... No, 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 no. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Study to shew thyself approved on God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All things that were written for time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Okay? You get that's how we show love to our enemies, how we bless those who persecute that what we're doing. Okay? All right? <laughs> okay? All right, let's continue. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that ye are thereon to call, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he who will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. First Peter chapter 4, verses 1 on verse 5, and then we will be done. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Not a martyrdom complex. Okay, watch out for that. Okay, to do the work of the Lord in truth, you're going to hurt. You're going to suffer. You're going to be betrayed. You're going to have your toes stepped on. You're going to get kicked in the stones. You're going to be depressed. You're going to wish you could go home. You're going to feel alone. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. And that right there flies contrary to antinomianism. Who's all about living up? In Christianity in general, you're being too extreme. You're being too blah, 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 blah. No. You're being a sissy. Oh. I wish. You know, the old, uh, I want to change everything. I want to change anything. I'm great. Shut up. You, that's an ignorant state. We, okay, I at one time thought that way. It's like, I'm grateful for the path the Lord brought me to himself. Um, I wouldn't have changed. I've changed everything. That, that, the longer you walk with the Lord, you, you'll, it's like, man, if I would have done that different. If I would have done that different. I wish that a saint grounded in the authorized version, the scriptures, would have met me way back when, when I was a babe. Would have saved me a lot of trouble in experiencing certain things in my walk with the Lord. Okay, it really would have. It really would have. Um, but see, in Christ... These are having, you know, having your senses exercised by reason of use. Yes. But, you know, as a lost man, too, dude, I would have changed everything. Everything. The only thing I wouldn't have changed, I would never, uh, I, would, I, I, I would have kept uh, out of school. <laughs> and that's the only thing I wouldn't have changed. You know, I dropped out of school and it's like, see ya! <laughs> okay. But let's, get, let's continue. Let's continue. Verse 3. 
For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Be alive, and those who are dead in trespasses and sins. I, I, I praise our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, for every precious moment of fellowship with the saints. Whether it's for 10 minutes or 10 hours. Whether it's for a couple hours or a few days. Whether it's a few days or a week. Uh, I, I treasure the fellowship of the saints. I, I really do. They, they are a precious jewel. Because brethren... We're not going to get along with everybody. And when, when you're trying to have fellowship with someone who isn't, you know, so don't be discouraged. Because, like I said, you're going to feel alone. I mean, it was like, well, Brad, you, you have someone. Yeah, I do. But you know what? I struggle with feeling alone as well. Okay? Not like, you know, some of you, I'll give you that. Don't, don't, just, but, um, just, just keep that in mind. It would be great if all the saints could get together, could get together and get along. Unfortunately, that is not the reality of the situation. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, now, like I like I had said to you in the community section, uh, we we are. You need to know this. We're we're changing our internet provider. And that's going to be happening, Lord willing, Monday or Tuesday. Got to pay attention because they're sending it by UPS. And UPS will not leave a package, nor will they ring a doorbell. So, um, so it's possible there might be a small lull in videos until we get this whole thing figured out. So, um, just so you know, okay? Uh, pray for one another. Thank you, brethren. We love you. Um, thanks for watching this if you do, and Lord willing, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.